Hi, thanks for tuning in to my Steam Party how-to videos. In today's video, we're going to talk about data replication and how do we send data from one Beacon client to the next. Uh, typically, whenever we have networking with Unreal, it, everything's really made assuming that people are already connected together on a map, a common map. With the Steam, with the online Beacon system, it's actually a mapless connection, so there is no data communication going back and forth. So anything that needs to communicate from the different players needs to go through the Steam Beacon itself. So how do we, how do, we do that um, with Blueprints? And this is what I want to talk about today. And, it's, and this is something that's new in an update that just came out, if not already came out, depending when you watch this video. Uh, so give me to give an example of why do we need this functionality. So basically in Steam Party, I'll go ahead and hit play here. We're not connected online right now. But as we uh, create a party, uh, we have uh, each player coming online, and then we want to be able to have them have a choice to, to choose like a warrior class or range healer, uh, range class or healer class, or maybe a, a color or any kind of data that we want to transmit back and forth. How do we do that through the Steam uh, Beacon client? Uh, well, basically, I went ahead and created these uh, buttons to uh, to represent those variables. So now uh, from the UMG side, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it's uh, nothing fancy here, just a scroll box with buttons. We'll get to connecting those buttons up in a little bit. So the first thing I wanna do is go to a blueprint. Now we have a new blueprint uh, that we can now utilize. It's called a beacon uh, player state. Now a beacon player state is is kind of confusing if you, if you think about the game. Uh, the game has itself a game mode, a game state, and a player controller with a player state. That those are the things that people usually are, are most familiar with. Well, on the beacon side of things, uh, we also have a, um, a beacon state, which is kind of like a game state for beacons that we can transmit data back and forth for like a lobby. Uh, and then what's connected to those game states are also beacon player states. So we also have a, another type of player state. It's a beacon player state that is transmitted back and forth in that game, that beacon game state, basically. So it's, it's a little bit confusing, but that I wanted to keep in line the same way that they use their uh, beacon system. So I, I do, did the same uh, exact terminology. So it's easy to follow through if you ever have any documentation or anything to look up in the code. Uh, but anyway, so let's go ahead and create a new blueprint class. And what we want to do is go to... Um, uh, player state and what you'll see is now we have a steam beacon player state not to confuse with any other kind of player state just a steam beaker beacon player state which is now blueprintable it wasn't uh, prior to this update we'll select on that and then once we do that we'll do uh, beacon player state example all right all right so now what we need to do is before we touch the that state, we need to go ahead and set that as our new default class we want to spawn whenever we create a new host, a party, a host, and we connect players up, we spawn this type of uh, player state class versus the default class. All right, so now we go into our game mode example, game instance example. Uh, so here's your game instance we created before. Uh, one of the things that we want to do is uh, on the uh, class defaults, which is off my screen, pull this over here. All right. All right, here they are off to the side. We have a new um, new category here called Lobby Beacon Player State Class. We need to go ahead and change that to our uh, BPS example. So now we have the correct player class being spawned whenever we create a, a party. Um, now, some people may ask, why is this being done in the game instance? Well, really, the online beacon system was never really made to be explosive blueprints. So this is kind of like a, a good place to make those settings because we need the game instance it's kind of like the brains for all operation connecting to the player controllers and stuff like that so it's a good place to keep these kind of options here as inside the game instance all right so we'll go ahead and go back to our bps example and open that up now what we want to do is go ahead and go to our event graft and uh, what we want to do is uh, create some some data that we want to send back and forth. So what I want to do is go, I want to go ahead and uh, create a variable. Let's go ahead and call it a character index. Character index. And we'll make sure that's a class of integer 0, 1, 2, 3, depending on what, you know, warrior, range, and healer. And then um, that's really it for the variable that we're going to do, for example. The next thing I want to do is uh, set up a, uh, a server uh, RPC. So I'll go ahead and create a custom event. 
and we'll go ahead and call this uh, set. Uh, we'll call it server. I always uh, call everything server on, on how I might name conventions. So server set character index. And then we'll go ahead and we want to add some inputs to this. Uh, we want to send to the server what integer we want. So we'll go ahead and call integer and we'll call that in uh, character index. And you can be as verbose as you want on the naming. I just keep it pretty simple. Um, and then uh, replicates, we'll want this to uh, run on server. All right, so that's really nice. So what we want to do is whenever we call this bad boy, we want to set this. But now this is just setting the variable on the client, right? So we need to go to this variable we created and make sure that it replicates. And what we want to do is I like to do rep notify. So we have a function that gets called when this actually gets uh, set. So what we can do is go ahead and um, make sure we set that variable. It's helpful. Let's also derive some information. So let's go ahead and get the display name. Since we're inside of the, uh, the beacon player state, it, we can get the, the, the name, the player name associated with this player state. So we'll go ahead and hit get display, get display name. All right. And then we'll want to uh, do a print string. We'll just, this is just for testing. So it's easy to show what's going on here. And what we want to do is I want to go ahead and do an append, an append. Oh, sorry. A pin for a string, not for an array. Pin. Here we go. <clears throat> Plug that in. And what I want to do is say uh, player player equals attackable pins here. This guy here has requested requested character index equal and then I'll go ahead and pull this down into here, have the auto conversion, and there we have it. And I want to go ahead and increase this time to like five seconds just for testing because I want to make sure that uh, we can see it. Now, I'll go ahead and leave the server um, blue. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and create uh, on this rep notify that we created whenever we receive it to the clients. So first we're going to do, we're going to say, Hey server, I want this character index. And it's going to say, okay, cool. I get this character index, character index. I'm going to save it. And then once I save it, I need to tell everybody, including the person that sent it. Um, you can definitely design it how you want to do your network replication. If you rather uh, set it first on your client and then send the data over there and not have it notified, it's up to you. Uh, all the networking uh, possibilities are exactly the same as regular blueprints with this, uh, this new, uh, player state class here. So if we go nuts either way you want to do that. Uh, and my, for my example, I'm going to go ahead and go to the on rep character index here. And I want to go ahead and do a, um, a local version of set um, of a set on rep character index too. So we'll go ahead and first talk about the on rep. We just want to display it that, hey, it's been sent across the network. So again, we'll, we'll do another print spring uh, string. Print spring. That doesn't sound good at all. <laughs> all right. And now, uh, again, pretty repetitive here. I love these append nodes. I use them all the time to string quick information together. All right. And then we'll do the same thing. Uh, get display. In fact, I can just literally just go copy this and uh, be happy with that. Okay. Copy. And on rep. Do this. Send here. But I want to go ahead and make sure this, we know this is a server, and then we need to go ahead and here, plug that in there, get the replicated data, and I want to make sure that this is client. Okay, oh, in fact, what we'll do is on, uh, on rep notify, on rep notify, character index, out received. So this is easy. And character index is equal to this character index, and that's it. Um, I think that's all we need to do. We'll go ahead and change the color too. We'll make sure to do that. Let's go ahead and change this to something like white. I, I like white there. It's easy to see. Um, maybe not on a, our background, but we'll try. Five seconds there. Save it. Save it. 
All right, great. So now we have the data being sent to the server. We started with the server being sent here, but we actually need to call this from the clients. So in order, in, or, in order to do that, we need to set a function that we can call from our UMG, basically. So what I want to do now is go ahead and create a new function. Uh, let's call this one um, local set character index, basically. So basically now we have the local version of what we're calling. So basically this is where we're locally setting character index from like a, a UMG call. Hey, uh, we hit the button, tell the button to set this index here, and then this will send it to the server. So we'll go ahead and say we need to pass in the data of an uh, integer also. So we'll go ahead and in character index also. And make that integer, and we're good. And then all we need to do is literally call the server now, server set character index. And that's just the relay from our UMG that we can connect up to. Of course, you can go ahead and just do it straight from UMG if you feel like doing that too. I just kind of like have a little bit more, um, uh, some setters and getters, keep everything functions localized to each other. Uh, makes it easier to troubleshoot in a lot of cases, not to have too many functions calling the uh, inside classes of other classes. Uh, but anyways, let's go on to the, the next thing, which would be, all right, let's double check here. We got a server being set. Now we go to UMG, and we need to call that from UMG. So that should be pretty simple. Let's go to the game instance. Well, actually, we go to the, the main menu, and I'll right, we'll go to a warrior class here. Uh, and what we're going to do is actually do something when we click the button. So this is just a very simple UMG. Again, you can make it however you, you would like to have in your project. I'm going to click on it, go down to uh, on click. Let's go ahead and do that one. And then I'll go ahead and go to a healer and we'll go on click on that one. And then we'll go to range and we hit on click on that one. And let's go ahead and get this set up. So what we'll want to do is um, whenever uh, hit this, we'll represent zero for a warrior. I'm gonna copy that here. Control copy, control paste. Sometimes I do it too fast. There we go. And then basically all we're gonna do is set the character index zero, one, and two. Of course, you can represent the data any way that you would please for your own project. This is for ease and simplicity. Uh, the next thing we wanna do is go ahead and get the game instance because we need to relay this down to the game instance now. And then we'll cast that to our um, Steam Beacon game instance, or you can do it to your GI game instance. It's okay, it doesn't matter either way. It depends if you have uh, other functions you would want to use. In this case, we don't, because we're going to use uh, get player states. So uh, we'll go ahead and send this data. We'll go ahead and branch all these to the same uh, code path, because it's going to run exactly the same thing. It's the only thing that's different is we're going to set the uh, character index itself. All right, so we'll do that. and. Oh, and this is also just a, a variable set in here, character selection. I had that in the, in the UMG menu. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, what we want to do is get uh, this um, beacon client. That's your your connection. You're the your beacon connection to the host. All right, so we'll get beacon client. And what we want to do is set it like is valid. There's a new thing that uh, maybe not too many people are aware of, but if you right click on this, you can actually go to convert to validate to get. And that's so much cleaner than having another node you have to string together. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then what we want to do is get the player state. Get player state. Get the player state of that client. And then we want to go ahead and cast that to our new one that we did. So BPS example, right? And then finally, we want to go ahead and say local set character index right there. There's that bad boy. And then we want to go ahead and set it to our verbal we said earlier and there we go it's pretty straightforward on getting that data sent down to the game instance to the player uh, state and have that replicated to the server and then also ca uh, cast it back down through the rep notifies to all the clients connected for that data so we'll go ahead and do a running example of that make sure that this all works there you have it. That's that's it. That's all you have to do to get data set back and forth. So now it's really testing. Make sure what we click gets replicated back up. And uh, one other thing to talk about while we're in here is I'll go ahead and go to um, the game instance and go to the event graph. And what we have now is something called a, a new event called add custom player data, state data. Now this is a hook that we can call into. So whenever we first load up a game, for example, let's say I always want to be the healer, 
I I don't have to want to always choose it. I just want it to know, you know, because, you know, I'm lazy. I want it, I always know I like the, the healer. So to do that, um, we can go ahead and do a save game, right? We can do a save game and save that down to the file uh, you gave, uh, you save game. Uh, or the another option is we could sync this up to Steam to our Steam cloud and have our preference save up there and we sync it back down uh, whenever we go online. Uh, either way, that should be handled through another class like a persistent user class. I think there's an example of that in like the, the shooter game. Uh, but anyways, you can use like a persistent user that loads the data either way, either from the hard disk first, and then it connects online and syncs up with Steam. Either way, you, you, you store your persistent data for the users you can route it to here in the game instance. So what you want to do is um, whenever uh, everything is loaded, when it comes online and then the the party system comes online, uh, it'll actually add a hook here and say, okay, hey, we're creating the client. Go ahead and set all your data, your preferred data here. So this is where we want to go ahead and say, hey, our character index, so uh, character index, set character index, right? We'll go ahead and set this uh, from our save game file or whatever system we use for our, your, your own project. So this is where we tie that into. Um, so once you first load up, you already have your preferences loaded into the player state. There's nothing you have to go through and call. It's just done automatically through the SOOC. So again, that's the uh, add custom player state data. You always just want to call your, your base class, especially if you extend it. Uh, by default, there's, it's pretty blank in the uh, default class, but if you extend it, you're going to have uh, in C++ side more things going on in there. And then again, just cast to your, your player state. And in fact, I need to cast to the proper player state, which is the B BPS, uh, cast to BPS example for our example. The other one was my practice one. All right, there we go. Oh, won't well, let me do that. Because it's technically a different blueprint. So there we go. And that will have it. There we go. And you can set that to whatever you have saved. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video and package the game and then load it up to show uh, what happens on the, uh, the finished product. Oh, before we go here, there's actually one more thing we do want to do, uh, set on this is we want to pull off of this and do local set character index uh, so that we can actually, you know, transmit that to the server once we do connect. So we, we go ahead and set it locally here and, uh, and then send it up. So we can actually skip this step and just uh, send it straight to here from the data. So again, um, you want to pipe your data into this point and then have it replicate automatically. So again, I'll go ahead and continue with the package. All right, I went ahead and cooked and packaged the game. Then I deployed it to another PC with a different Steam account. And I'm gonna go ahead and send that account over an invite. He's gonna go ahead and accept it, join the party. And we can already see that uh, when we first started up, the, the player got set from our save because I did set it to zero um, in our example before we, we broke. All right, so he did join it. And now what I want to do is I'm the host, so I should see a message. Let's go ahead and see it just for myself. Uh, I want to say I'm in range class. It says, okay, I have a blue and then white. So we know we got one on the client and one on the, uh, the server. All right, great. <clears throat> and then I want to ask Jason Dev to go ahead and hit healer. Hit healer. All right, on the other PC. And I got a... a a, uh, a server request to uh, from the blue and then also on hit uh, notify that I send to everybody <clears throat> so that seems to be working pretty good all right I go ahead and I'm gonna exit once here and I'll go on the inverse of that I'll go ahead and do the go ahead and go to invite me and click on Devro and I'll go ahead and get an invite there we go I'll go ahead and accept it and then I'll go ahead and jump into the party. And once I do, there, character index zero. And uh, I see Jason Dev. I'll go ahead and change my side to uh, ranged. And then as you noticed, I only got the white. So I sent the request up to the server. The server got the message and then it sent back down on the on hit rep notified to say that we did receive that one. So you saw the whole loop since we got that white notification. I'm going to hit, hit range and then I'm going to click on warrior and then you see it updating then healer and I'm going to hit and keep hitting the different buttons. You see that the updates uh, back to the uh, from the server back to myself. So that's it. If you guys have any questions or comments uh, feel free to leave them below and thanks again for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.